If you've never understood the importance of Linux, and even if you have no intention to use Linux, let me explain why its mere existence is still important in your life. And for those of you who do understand its importance, let's talk about how it's being threatened, and what we can at least try to do about it instead of just rolling over and letting the future of technology take yet another hit. For the purpose of this video, there's no need to go in-depth about how awesome Linux is, which it is. All we need to know for this discussion is that Linux is an operating system. An operating system that is completely free to use, unlike Windows. An alternative to Windows that needs to exist and is impactful to you, even if you don't use it. So we'll start with basic economics and really just common sense. When two or more companies are competing for customers, they're forced to at least try to offer you a fair price and experience, whether they want to or not. Market competition and having alternatives to products and services is a good thing. Especially when we're discussing things of great importance to your day-to-day -day life, like being able to use a computer. And now when you buy a new computer, even if you don't pay for the Windows license individually, it's still worked into the cost of the device. Microsoft, who makes the Windows operating system, charges the manufacturer a fee for every copy of Windows they put onto a machine, and then the manufacturer passes that cost onto you. So you're paying for Windows one way or another. Right now, almost everyone has a computer. It's it's not prohibitively expensive. But how long will that be the case if there's no alternative to Windows? If they have a complete monopoly on computing in general and you simply have no choice? That's the situation we're going to be in if Linux ceases to exist. However unlikely that might seem now. Ultimately, do you trust a mega corporation to be fair about pricing if they have a complete stranglehold on the market. The fact that Windows 11 requires a Microsoft account to even be able to use it is a strong indication that Microsoft wants to move to a subscription-based model. A price model where they charge you a monthly fee to use your own computer, and that's on top of the cost of the computer itself. And we all know how frequently that leads to higher and higher prices over time. Even if that specifically doesn't happen, price gouging is always a concern when a company has thoroughly cornered a market. Right now, if Microsoft went wild with their prices, they know people don't have to put up with it. If the cost of a Windows license key got too expensive, they know there would be a lot of people people searching for how to install Linux and realizing it's not that difficult. The problem is, that seems to be changing. In other words, if Microsoft came out and said, you're going to pay $30 a month to use your own computer, even more people would say, no we're not, we're going to use Linux and only Linux. We have a choice. But what happens if it gets more and more difficult to install Linux? What if you can't install it at all? Then your only choice is to pay anything Microsoft demands or never use a computer again. And while that is an extreme example, that very well could be the direction we're heading. Now, maybe you have enough money where you can't be bothered to care about things like monopolistic price gouging. For the rest of us, let's talk Talk about the issue threatening Linux. Secure Boot. Specifically, the inability to disable Secure Boot on many modern machines. And I know how a lot of people are going to respond already, so let me preemptively say, just because there's a workaround today doesn't mean there's going to be a workaround a year from now, or five years from now. So once again, we don't need to go super into depth for the purpose of this video. All we need to know is that a 
lot of computer motherboards possess a technology called Secure Boot. And yes, Secure Boot does have positive benefits. But that means you make it an option. You make it enabled by default. However, when they're making devices where it's more and more difficult or impossible to disable Secure Boot, that has much more sinister implications. And that's because when Secure Boot is enabled, you don't have the option to install Linux as a dedicated dedicated system. Meaning you can't just install Linux, you have to run it on a VM on top of Windows or something along those lines. Now because I use a lot of older hardware, I can disable Secure Boot easily and create a standalone Linux machine. As long as we can disable Secure Boot, all of us have that option to essentially walk away from Windows and they know that. The threat that Linux, and in turn everyone who uses a computer is facing, is that a lot of manufacturers are shipping out motherboards where you can no longer disable Secure Boot. There's often workarounds now, but that might not always be the case. And the workarounds themselves are likely to become less and less accessible to the average person and might even completely cease to exist. Maybe you're not convinced that a massive corporation like Microsoft would ever be unfair with pricing, or maybe you don't care, and that's fine. But for anyone in the know, I think it's time we vote with our wallets and stop supporting any manufacturer who ships a motherboard where you can't disable Secure Boot. I know that sometimes these types of things feel hopeless, and I definitely feel it. But I would point out that tech is becoming more and more popular, and a lot of people are learning about computers. There's enough of us to at least make an impact if we refuse to support this practice. A bit of a different video than my standard here today, so thanks for bearing with me. Shout out to The Shades, aka a Fifty Shades of Beige, who I was discussing this with in my last live stream. And thank you for watching. Chair Desk!